Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome back to some more Five Nights at Freddy's news. Once again, it has been quite a while since I've given y'all some FNAF news, so we have quite the list to go through today. We got a whole bunch of news on FNAF AR, the books, even some merchandise news, specifically for Security Breach, and then also some very interesting updates on the Fazbear Fanverse initiative. So let's not waste any more time, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe, and even if you think you're subscribed maybe double check also while you're down there hit the like button and let's start it off with some book news specifically the next Fazbear Fright book number 10 friendly face that's the one with the terrifying cat on the on the cover it comes out in just over a week on September 7th but a few people have gotten the book early and with that some people have been posting some spoilers on the book on the internet so just be careful if you don't want to be spoiled and just as a heads up I do plan on making a full summary on on the book and all three of its stories including the epilogue so hopefully I can get that out soon and speaking of the Fazbear Fright books the prankster aka Fazbear Frights number 11 has a official audio preview as always it is copyrighted so I cannot play it in this video but it will be linked down below same with all the other sources I use in my FNAF news videos it comes out in November so we're actually getting very very close to the end of the Fazbear Fright books staying on topic with books and release dates actually we have a few books that have been delayed. The Freddy Files Ultimate Guide aka the FNAF Ultimate Guide has been delayed to December 7th and then the graphic novel for the fourth closet got delayed all the way to May 3rd of 2022. Now I've seen a lot of people try and compare the release date, the new release date for the Freddy Files to what could be the possible release date of Security Breach and to that I say have you not seen what has happened all the other attempts we've made to connect the release date of the game to the release date of its merch. As for the delay of the graphic novel for The Fourth Closet, I'm actually kind of happy about it because so far the book looks amazing and I would absolutely hate for them to rush and get out the book early. So I'm actually not too upset about this delay. And speaking of the graphic novels for FNAF, we actually got a bit of bonus news. So the graphic novel for The Silver Eyes had Pinky Pills as the illustrator, but then somebody else at Scholastic did all the coloring inside of the book itself. But with the launch of Pinky's new website, she actually released some of the coloring that she did on the book and personally I think I prefer this over what we got in the final book. It honestly has a lot more detail, a lot better feel to it with the colors and I'm a little sad that it wasn't used because again I prefer this over what we got in the final book. And now moving on to some FNAF AR news we are once again still waiting on the fall update but with September right around the corner who knows maybe we can get an update on that soon but while we wait we do have the spring trap spree blast from the past to look forward to. Since the last FNAF news video, we got Toxic Springtrap, also the Curse skin, which this is not a Illumix rant video, but they literally posted Curse T-posing onto their official Twitter page. I just can't with Illumix sometimes. And then we also have the Summer Smash Photo Booth challenge happening right now. The photo booth ends in like two days, so if you want more details, I'll leave it linked down below. And then finally, after such a long wait, we finally finally got an update on the One Night at Flumpty's console ports. Click Team made a tweet saying, here is some footage of the console UI we plan on using for hashtag One Night at Flumpty's 1 through 3, as shown in Flumpty's 1. With the help of Fizdom, we are getting much closer to the completion. Once complete, the egg collection will come with all three titles in a package for each console. I'll be playing the footage of the UI for consoles right now as I talk, though I do want to point out that I don't think that this as footage of the console ports. I think it's most likely filmed on the PC, but with images of the console UI they plan to add into the ports overlaid. And in the video, it once again says demonstration, so yeah, I don't think that this is port footage. But it feels so good to know that they're finally getting progress done on the consoles. And also the mention of the egg collection, which contains all three of the games on what I assume to be one application, in my opinion, sounds absolutely phenomenal. So if I had to take a guess, I would assume that we can maybe finally see One Night at Flumpty's 1, 2, and even 3 officially release on consoles and other platforms maybe by the end of the year. And apparently according to Kane Carter on Twitter, the song at the end of the new One Night at Flumpty's 3 footage by Click Team is actually a short preview of its menu theme. And I'll play the clip of that right now.
Once again, some very exciting info. I can't wait for Flumpty's 3. And speaking of Kane, let's talk about Pop Goes Arcade. Because out of nowhere, Kane tweeted out, Update for Pop Goes Arcade coming soon. Along with the brand new thumbnail for the game on Game Jolt. He says, just to set expectations, this update is not the upcoming revamp one with the updated visuals. Not a major gameplay update or the premium update for the ports. He then provides a brief summary for the update. Updated arcade cabinet visuals visuals, updated cutscenes, faster load times, smaller file size, Red the Robin is now Holly the Robin, updated intro, pause, and outro text with new fonts, logos, and information, updated UI elements, intelligent enemy spawning, which means no enemy in a long time equals a higher chance of one spawning. And then he made a huge devlog talking about the update and what they're doing with Popgo's arcade. Progress on Popgo's Evergreen has been pretty good. I still consider it to be early in development, and to set comfortable expectations for the community and my team, I implore that you do not assume that it'll release anytime soon. It will still take a long time. I personally think it'll be the final game in the initial five fanverse games to release. Yes, even after t -Jock. He then goes on to clarify that part of his team will continue to work on Evergreen mostly in developing rooms and designing slash modeling characters and props. However, Emil and Kane are going to focus on PopGo's arcade for the time being. Some new management has been put in place for the fanverse due to Scott's retirement, and we have been encouraged by them to work on Popgo's Arcade and its premium update, which is additional content they are making for the ports of the game, so that it can potentially roll out this year. Sounds good to me. So there's a lot to unpack there, most notably Popgo's Arcade could release this year, and also new management for the fanverse initiative. We'll talk about that in a quick second. We are almost finished with the general update for Popgo's Arcade. This will be available on Game Jolt as a normal free download. It won't affect any save progress. I'm not sure when it will be released, but I think before the end of this month sounds likely. We are getting pretty close to the end of the month, and I think Kane said on Twitter at some point, give it about a week and we should be all set. Once we are done with the free update and it has been released, Emil and I will continue working on the premium update for the game. For those unaware, there is a paid version slash DLC of Arcade that includes a post-game chapter. If you consider Pop Goes Arcade to be separated into two parts, one where you fight the corrupt mini-bosses, and then one where you fight the dead mini-bosses, then you can somewhat expect the post-game chapter to be a third part of the game slash the story. It will include new items, enemies, areas, music, and a cool but simple story. This part of Arcade will take a little longer to make, naturally, but we do hope for it to be ready and potentially in online stores before the end of the year. The fact that we could get Flumpty's 3 and Pop Goes Arcade and maybe the premium edition of Arcade all this year is fantastic. And going back to new management on the Fanverse initiative, this is what Kane said on Twitter. Someone else is currently handling the Fanverse, communicating with the devs and whatnot. I'm not going to be the one to reveal that info though. If it ever goes public, it'll be through their own announcement or something Scott says. So it seems that since Scott has retired, we could maybe see multiple people in charge of FNAF from now on. I mean, we've already seen that only one person is in charge of only the Fanverse. Now, maybe things could change and that one person could be in charge of all of FNAF, but right now it seems like we may get multiple people in charge of the franchise. For example, someone who covers the book, someone with the games, the movie, you know, the fanverse, all that stuff. That's just my thoughts. Obviously, it's not confirmed until we get something from Scott or the new owner slash owners. And speaking of the fanverse, it turned one year old a couple days ago. And in celebration, Kane released brand new banners slash wallpapers for Evergreen, one with Pop Goes and then also, he teased brand new reveals of the new designed characters. You got Blake the Badger, and then you have Sarah the Squirrel, and also Saffron the Squirrel, with Sarah being announced on September the 26th. Then you have Stone the Crow, and also the brand new Endo for Evergreen. And now we have some updates on the upcoming Hex and FNAF collaboration. Once again, if you still don't know what Hex is, Hex is Darko's brand, and they teamed up with Scott and FNAF to to create some brand new FNAF plushies. And just recently, they teased Fredbear in Spring, Bonnie coming out as plushies soon. Now, I see a lot of people thinking that that plushie is Vanny instead of Spring Bonnie, but here is Docco on a Q&A stream specifically calling out Fredbear in Spring Bonnie. Um, I'm actually doing um, 
Fred Bear and Spring Bonnie plushies. And in that Q&A, Doggo revealed a lot of info on upcoming projects, which include Hex and his new songs. I'll talk about them right now. He says the Hex plushies will be released in chronological order of the games, which means after the FNAF 1 plushies, hopefully we can see FNAF 2, 3, 4, you know, Sister Location, Pizza Sim, UCN, all that, you know, all that stuff. He also says that there was a possibility we could see some Security Breach and Fazbear Frights Hex plushies. He says that the Hex, Fredbear, and Spring Bonnie plushies are done, and that they should be releasing later this year. He reveals that all the props are magnetic, aka Freddy's mic, Bonnie's cupcake, Fox's hook, and Spring Bonnie's knife. He says that Hex Mangle is still being worked on, and he specifically said that he is set on getting it done. He revealed that the working title for the plushies is Parts and Service, because, you know, you can take on and off their limbs. And then he also showed off updated designs for Foxy, an updated design of Bonnie, and an updated design of Chica, as well as a mixed and matched Hex plushie that has Spring Bonnie's legs. Moving on to his songs, he revealed that Darkest Desire 2 is officially done and has been for quite a long time. However, the music video is just beginning production. He says that Lonely Freddy is officially done, the song itself, and that the animation for the song is almost finished. He's hoping to have that out by early September. The Out of Stock song is also officially finished. And he also says that he wants to work on a song about Security Breach after the game's out. And now moving on to the final topics of the video, we have brand new merchandise of FNAF by Funko. First up is a Pint Size Heroes Christmas Advent Calendar, which includes 24 stylized vinyl figures. This is what the box looks like. And once again, we have brand new Funko OCs. We have what appears to be a gingerbread Freddy, or Toy Freddy because it has the rosy cheeks. To his right, we can see Bonnie, but he looks like cake. I don't know. Ice cream Bonnie, cupcake Bonnie, cake Bonnie, I don't know. And then we also have the return of Chocolate Chica. And then we have Blacklight Foxy, but he has rosy cheeks, so it's Mangle, but it's not all busted up, so it's not Mangle. I have no clue. And then we also have what appears to be Candy Cane Foxy, or like Peppermint Foxy. I have no clue what's happening. And then we also got a Puppet Pint Size Hero. Another version of Freddy. I don't know if that's Toy Freddy or Rockstar Freddy or Lefty. I have no clue. We also have another Mangle. You can actually pre-order the calendar right now. It ships out in November. And then the Something Wild FNAF card game was revealed. As you can see, it'll include Rockstar Freddy, Funtime Foxy, what appears to be Bonnie or Withered Bonnie, Springtrap, Ballora at the top with the puppet, and once again, Rockstar Freddy. I don't think that this has a release date yet, but I'd assume it'll go up soon. And then out of nowhere, we got FNAF wrapping paper. They're going to be exclusive to Walmart, and as you can see, there are two designs. One, which has the black light pop figures, and then another Another one which has the nightmare pops. I'm assuming they're gonna release sometime around the holiday season. And now, let's talk about FNAF U2s. Because there was a very interesting discovery once U2s held yet another Q&A on their subreddit. Because someone said, will the FNAF collection have a bonus item? And U2s replied with, yes, Security Breach will have a bonus item. And everyone was like, okay, well we know they're making a FNAF collection and a Fanverse collection. So, we're assuming the FNAF collection is going to be based upon Security Breach. And then someone else said, How are the FNAF U2s going? U2s replied, Going good. We just finished the Security Breach line of concepts. Walking on 3D models now. And everybody was like, wait a second. That sounds like it's a different wave. And then Kane Carter confirmed on Twitter, some people seem to think that this AMA answer means that the sole FNAF set of figures is based on Security Breach. I can confirm that no, this isn't the case. There are two separate sets. So that means we have three FNAF U2 sets coming. One on FNAF, one on the Fanverse Initiative, and one on Security Breach. Assuming these all have about four, you're looking at a couple hundred dollars worth of FNAF U2's figures, which is absolutely going to destroy my wallet. So I'm honestly really looking forward to this. Again, it's gonna be very expensive, and I really don't think we need that many U2's on FNAF, but I'm always happy to see this because I actually do really enjoy U2's figurines. But once again, 
those prices, man. I think you two said that they wanted the FNAF collection revealed in the summertime, and, well, we're kind of closing in on summertime. So hopefully it'll be around a October release date, you know, around Halloween, the spooky time. But that's not confirmed, that's just my thoughts. And that's also just the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I really gotta get back into doing FNAF news videos more often because these videos are getting super long because I just keep waiting. But yeah, that's gonna be it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.